what is challenging about being a woman and looking for a new hairdresser? really tough for me for years I didn't have like a standard hairdresser and I was always just like because you know what because every woman like okay here's what it is every lady's hair is is a unique snowflake and it's really tough to like find someone that understands your particular unique snowflake of a set of hairs and so that's why I and so it, it's hard to like find someone that'll you know, that'll like learn all the weird, like, I've got a cowlick over here, I've got another one over here. The whole thing is flat unless you put a bunch of crap in it and make it look gorgeous. You know what I mean? So like there's all of that stuff that I'm always, uh, that was tough for me for years until, you know, until I found Fox and Jane, until then it worked out. <laughs> Talk about a little bit of like the evolution of your life as a woman getting comfortable with yourself. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny because I think I first, dis like, in high school I discovered lipstick, mm -hmm. and I realized that I my it confidence grew by, like, 578% just by putting on lipstick, and then later I discovered, like, just brushing my hair, you know what I mean? And then later Absolutely. I discovered, you know what I mean, a little, like, a little concealer, and then later I discovered, like... I think one of the, like, actually one of the big discoveries was a uh, root lifter because, like, I hate that my hair is so straight. Yeah. So I think, like, uh, it's been, like, little tiny in incremental ways of, like, feeling 5% better about myself, 5% better and better and better until, you know, finally you see the gorgeous person I'm for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I hate myself like a normal woman. Okay. <laughs> You know, and not because I'm sitting here with you. Yeah. What do you like about Fox and Jane? Not okay. because we're really good friends. No, I know. Okay, so okay, so this is what I do. This is what I I, I do like. Um, this is what I like about Fox and Jane. Uh, I feel like the first time I went in, it just felt like a bunch of friends cutting hair, <laughs> and I don't know why that matters to me. Like it doesn't like the vibe of friendship in the room. It's not like that affects my hair, but it affects my mood looking at my hair, I guess. So there's like that, just like general vibe, um, and then the uh, and then like I, I you know I get real specific and like. A bunch of people at Fox and Jane have cut my hair, and they can they all handle it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, I try. Like, am I am I too needy? Maybe, but they handle it. Like all of the weird little specific things, and you know, and I don't know. They just do a great job, and I don't know. And sometimes I have a glass of wine. I don't know. Like it's just like a lovely. You know what I mean? It's just like a lovely experience. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Meanwhile, I only have cups of tea. I don't care. Thank you. Because, uh, that's okay. Because it sounded because, better. Well, it also like helps us because people know that right, 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 we have more right, 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 right. right. Um. Well, what would you what 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 about the beauty experience or the the, the it's funny we were just talking about um you know cosmetic stuff mm -hmm. like what what are some of the more challenging or 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 more rewarding parts of the beauty process for you? You mentioned lipstick, so you kind of like nailed that. Yeah. But what are you like? Do you, is it like I love that I've nailed my haircut, or I love that I've figured out this about clothes? Like, what's your aha moment? I guess is what I'm trying to get to. Um. Well, so there's a. I I, I think actually it is a hair related thing. I think I love that I I love that I realized a long time ago that my hair looks better short mm -hmm. like it's just i think a lot of women want like a lot of lustrous things so they can go like this and then they can go like this uh which is great um and i love and i love watching women do that as well i'm not a monster but i just learned that for my face like it's just i'm a i'm a gal with a bob and that's who i am and i like just learn that it's the bob uh, and, and the lipstick and, you know, and some color. And then, and that makes me feel like I can uh, go out in the world. You know, we have, a, we have a really cool clientele in that, like, I think we have a few low key celebs such as yourself who are kind of like, they're not looking for that private room Fifth Avenue moment. Right, they right. just like want to go to the salon, have a normal experience. But I think we, from them, we hear often, and I think we all know about some of the trials and tribulations of just being, in an influence position, in a celebrity position, and your image. So tell me yeah. about that journey for you. Well, um, yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard of show business, but <laughs> it's um, an unforgiving field yeah. where you're supposed to kind of look amazing all the time. Even if you're not, and this is the crazy thing, 
even if you're not playing the hot girl. Like, I'm a comedian. Nobody expects me to be, like, showing my tits and being really hot and whatever. Like, that's not what anyone's even expecting from me. And yet, I still have to be a kind of something that looks decent and pretty, you know, or whatever. And I think that... So it's that's what's interesting to me about a show business is like even the quirky gal has to kind of look like a certain level cute and it's um it is a lot of pressure because you have to like maintain it. it has to be constant over time because people want you know like if a if a casting director or a booker or whatever they want they want they don't want you to show up and suddenly you're a completely different person you know what I mean they're booking you because you're this thing you usually look like this you usually dress like that. Um, and so, yeah, there's like the, there's like a, um, a pressure to be cute and con- and consistent. That's great. And then tell me how, because I think comedian has changed. Tell me if you agree with this. Like, I remember coming up, like, female comedians weren't beautiful. Like, they weren't no, cute. It was actually yeah. kind of like, I think you were like trying too hard. And you're like yes. a cute female comedian. But that's yeah. totally shifted in the last, yeah. year, what, five, six years even, very recently. I mean, like, when I started doing comedy, um, I was like wearing pants, <laughs> which, is, which, which I know doesn't sound really Were they forced? Were they like forcing I, pants on you? Oh, yeah. um, but no, because, and I, I and, and, and why that's ridiculous, because I never wear pants, you know what I mean? It's just not something I do. And, but I was trying to be more masculine. I was trying to be just more like, I don't care, you know, and that is something that has changed. I think female comedians are allowed to be like, much hotter now and embrace their femininity. There was something about being a comedian earlier where you had to just pretend like you were masculine, you had a peen, and you were adjusting it all the time. And like, it's just not like that anymore. And I think it's, I mean, it's very liberating. Wow, that's so fascinating. Right? Yeah, because I think so I've, I've seen it happen, but I never considered the pressure of the why. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. how we got there and like, was there an influencer for you? Was I mean, there anyone who paved the way that just came out and was like, I'm totally not participating? Well, I think, you know, I think it's interesting because in the early days, you know, the audience wasn't necessarily comfortable with female comedians as there just weren't that many. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so. And they, quote, weren't funny. And right? they weren't. <laughs> exactly. And they couldn't produce humor. So. Exactly. Is that too. Um, <laughs> so I think that's, I think in the early days there was that pressure to just kind of make yourself more masculine. And I think what's interesting to me, and I don't even know if there was like a particular contemporary person that, that turned things around for me personally, but I grew up on Lucille Ball, like reruns after school or whatever. And, um, and I, she was a very feminine person, you know, and, um, and I just sort of like, and I am at the end of the day, like, I love that look, you know what I mean? Um, down to the retro nature of it. And, um, and so I think for me, it was really about, um, just like getting back to like what, you know, got me into coming in the first place. And it was like this super feminine lady who did it, you know? That's amazing. Yeah. That was great.